Hello there. The talk is that the PM is secretly negotiating away any future UK autonomy and locking the country into permanent EU servitude. There is still speculation that the UK government is negotiating for the country to remain under EU control for much longer than the 20-month transition period already agreed. But it seems that the PM is trying to reassure Brexiteers that she will not be signing up to some sort of eternal Irish backstop arrangement that would tether the UK to the EU via some sort of customs union forevermore. Talk that she was planning such a move had sparked rumours that ministers such as Work and Pension Secretary Esther McVeigh, International Development Secretary Penny Mordaunt and the leader of the House of Commons, Andrea Leadsom, were deeply unhappy about it and it was entering ministerial resignation territory for them. Mrs May's spokeswoman said, The Prime Minister would never agree to a deal which would trap the UK in a backstop permanently. And the Chancellor, Philip Hammond, while talking to Bloomberg, said, We are not going to remain in anything indefinitely. We are very clear this has to be a temporary period. Philip Hammond also predicted that there will be a Brexit dividend if we are able to secure a deal with the EU. This dividend would come on two fronts. The first is that, once the deal is done, business uncertainty over a no-deal WTO exit would evaporate. And the second is that all the contingency money currently set aside to deal with a WTO Brexit could then be released to either bolster public spending or deliver tax cuts. So, positive talk about Brexit from the Chancellor, and about taxes, and about public spending. What's the catch, I wonder? I expect we'll find out on or before the time he delivers his autumn budget statement on the 29th of October. But in a warning, the UKIP leader Gerard Batten tweeted, Mrs May intends to betray Brexit. Her aim has always been to reach an agreement whereby we leave in name only. Then in a few years' time, the UK can be taken back into the EU. Those who genuinely want to leave the EU should join UKIP. We will continue the struggle. Come what may, with a capital M. And the former leader, Nigel Farage, tweeted, Whether Mrs May's customs union plan is permanent or happens for a few years, it should not be happening at all and is a betrayal of the Brexit vote. This Prime Minister says one thing and then does another. And Tory Brexiteer MP Andrew Bridgen, who has already submitted his letter of no confidence in Theresa May to the chairman of the Tory backbench 1922 committee, told the BBC Politics Live show today... Colleagues are telling me that a lot of Brexiteers are being invited for dinner and lunch at number 10 next week, so I guess there is bad news on the way. Now, the latest and fourth set of government Brexit impact statements has been released, which I haven't had time to look into properly yet. But judging by the BBC response, they aren't full of doom and national destruction, as the leading comment is about the risk of the single energy market in Ireland ceasing to function, which could mean that fallback arrangements would need to be used to ensure power is transmitted between Britain and Northern Ireland. Then there is a warning that Eurostar rail services could be suspended without a specific agreement between the UK and France. Sounds to me like both of those are manageable. What do you think? Now, here's a great scaremongering story that Brexiteers can use against the Remainers. Now, the pro-EU Brexit reversal lobby keep claiming that we can wave a take-back Article 50 magic wand and everything will go back to how it was before, with all the opt-outs and rebates, etc. Well, the EU Commissioner for Budget and Human Resources, Gunter Oettinger, has poured a large bucket of cold water on that one. As far as he is concerned, if the UK rows back on Brexit, he says that we can't keep the mother of all rebates, the only permanent rebate in the EU. Gunther Oettinger said on Friday that he would find it absolutely fabulous if British voters decided to remain in the EU through a second referendum, reports Yahoo Finance. 
but he dealt a blow to campaigners calling for a people's vote by confirming the UK would have to pay more into the EU budget if it remained. Oettinger has long been targeting all rebates for elimination and said in January that Brexit would be a good opportunity to achieve this. Although the UK has the only permanent rebate, other states do benefit from negotiated temporary rebates. But he also said that the UK would be paying into the EU coffers should it end up remaining in the customs union. Should the UK, or part of the UK, permanently or temporarily remain in the customs union, then they will be treated in equal fashion as regards all their rights and obligations, he said. So one assumes that should a decision be made to keep the UK in the or a customs union with the EU or enter into talks to extend Article 50 or even reverse Brexit, it will cost the UK untold billions. But it seems there are also financial repercussions for certain EU states that enjoy an EU rebate on a temporary status such as Germany, the Netherlands, Austria, Sweden and Denmark as the pressure is coming on for those to be removed. More budget upheaval in the EU on the way, it seems. Earlier this year, the Netherlands, Austria and Denmark made their disquiet over ending these rebates known, with the Dutch PM Mark Rutte saying that removing them was not a solution for the underlying problem of the unfair distribution of costs, and that his country therefore rejected the move. But it's not just that. The EU also wants to increase its budget not reduce it after Brexit. Looks like the citizens of the wealthier EU states are going to be paying for the bloc's superstate ambitions. Marvellous. Finally, I got this one from Twitter. In this new world, you can be anything that you demand. Where a big man called Butch wants to identify as a female, that's fine. Welcome, Butch. And little Samantha wants to identify as a transsexual butterfly. That's wonderful, and how sweet. And Theresa May wants to identify herself as a Brexit-believing Tory. <laughs> now who's going to believe that one? So, please let us all know what you think by leaving a comment below. Thank you for watching. Please do like and share this video. And also, subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.